The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Psalm 86, 7 to 10. In the day of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Psalm 107, 19 to 20. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Psalm 16, 1 to 2. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12-13 And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Before we start, sa itong Bible study, niningadlaw, gikinahangla ng itong pagsusi. Sa tagsa-tagsa na itong kakalag, kung nanapawag kita ay gihambin di ang mga sala. Sala sa nauna, sala sa dila, sala sa buhat. Kining mga mga sala, ang itong nabuhat ni Adlaw, may mula magbabag sa itong pagbuhat, itong pagtuon sa pulong sa Diyos Busa. Right away, let us use the principle of 1 John 1.9. Nga naging on sa in English, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For you, unbeliever, the issue you face is not confession of your sins, it is using your free will. So you can make the most important decision in your entire life. The decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Acts 16.31 again on. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Sa hilom magamputa. Balaan na mga Diyos, nagkapasalamat kami kanimo nining lain na sab nga adlaw, ngay mong gipadangat ka na mo. Salamat nga buhi pa kami ni nga mong lawas. Umani kami sa among pagpadayon sa pagtuon sa among pulong. Pinagin nining among Bible study through the YouTube sa Vic Malbido Evangelistic Ministry. Umani kami karon tulutuli kami, ugagaka kami, pasabta kami sa imong dugang kamaturan. Pinagis pagtudlo ka na mo sa balaang Espiritu Santo. Kining tanan na mong ipasalamatan sa ngala ni Ginoong Heso Kristo. Amen. Mayang adlaw sa tanan na itong mga subscribers o sa itong mga higala, mga igsuon diyan ni Kristo, welcome kaninyong tanan. Ani pa kita magadupot, 
ni ining atong tunanan nga kulbahinam the doctrine of rapture meaning the resurrection of the church okay kagapon nagisgo kita ni bahin ni apostol pablo nga nagaingon siya nga it is possible that kining maong pagsakgaw the rapture can happen during my time while I am still alive, mo ka nagisulti ni Pablo. What Paul meant to say, mo kini, nga kining maong rapture, kining pagsakgaw sa simbahan, could have happened during his time. Correct? But did it happen already? Or not yet? Tubag, not yet. Tungod kay, we are still here. Niya pa magkita. Nag-ginhawa uh, pa mang kita, buhay pa kita sa atong lawas, therefore, wa pa may tabo, kining maong pagsakgaw. Now, we should know, na kining maong pagsakgaw, the next number of God's prophetical um, timetable nga atong gipaabot. Every believer is expecting and looking forward to this event nga maong pagsakaw, pagkuha ka natin mga magtutuogikan din he from the face of the earth. O dadun na tiya kita sa Diyos dito sa eternidad. Now, so it has not happened yet. It has not happened yet. Now, right at this very moment, while you are hearing this message, ang uh, pagsakaw has not occurred yet. Not yet. But even at the time of the Apostle Paul, he was already saying that uh, it could happen. It could have happened during my time. Now, sometimes we pamilya ko ni ining atong pagtuon bahin ini. Without me about this doctrine, you can say that it is also possible, as I also have said, ng kining maong hitabo. Mahitabo, okay, can happen during our time, correct? Now, what is the appropriate word which we can use regarding this matter? And so, may tukma gyud na pulong. Do you know the appropriate word for it? Ang tukma gyung pulong na dumagamit mo kining pulong imminency. Now, kaya na mga doktrina na bahay ni ini, the doctrine of the eminency of the rapture of the church. Now, do you know what this really mean? Iba ko ba kung sa gibot bo, tiba sa bot ni ini? Paminaw. It means, nga kining maong hitabo, nga rapture, may happen at any time. Okay? Any time. It may happen right at this moment while nagpaminaw kanini, it may happen next year, or it may happen a thousand years from today. And that is what it means by imminency. That is the imminency of this particular event. You know, karon, karong panahon na, It is the only series of incidents, series of happenings, mga sunod-sunod ba, mga pangitabo, that are currently happening nga atong yun yung tutukan, atong saksihan, atong tanahon, to be keenly discerning on. Tungod kay, if you have been watching and following very closely sa current world events, most particularly dito sa um, Middle East countries. Kining mo ang mga pangitabo dito don't seem to appear like what is prophesied to happen in the future. They seem to make a copy of what is prophesied to happen in the future. Now, ato ragod ni Kluruhon, kining mo ang butang alang kanimo ha? nga sukad sa pagsugod gyud ni ning katuigan sa simbahan 
nga mga yatunggi pasilungan karon. Where? The time in which we live, the age of the church, and in fact, throughout this age, okay, the very center, ang sentro gyud, the world's focus in terms of occurrences, incidents, and events, is kanang nagpangita po niya sa Middle East countries. Now, as far as the Word of God is concerned, ang katapusan nga uh, gubat sa kalibutan, the last world war, the third world war, or the fourth world war, or whatever that's going to be, that is going to take place, did to get the Middle East countries. But for the moment, tutuki lang yun on what's going on ni ining mga mga nasod did to the Middle East. Because why? Do you know why? Because that is the key. Mogi ka na mawang yawi. Now, keeping addressed, abreast with go- goings on, on right there in the Middle East countries, mo kini ang yawi ni ining tanan. Mo kini ang yawi to uh, understand further the events that are taking place in the days to come within this age in which we live. Now, apatinam dumi kanunay kini nga butang. There are no prophecies that have to be fulfilled. Di ba ako kang nangyayinan kagahapon bahay nini? Why mga propesya? Doon na lahi gitawag o gunsa. Historical trends nga ikaw, ingon nga magtutuo, have to be very discerning. Kinangalan mag malinggaton ko ka. O ba na binisaya? To be discerning in order for you to be able to understand as to as ka pa ingon where you are heading. Karon, sa atong pagpadayon, hindi nga itong pagtuon, bahin ni mga butanga, Abdihe lagod paliho ka ng imong Biblia, if you will, to Psalms uh, chapter 137. Okay? Now, ang libro sa mga salmo, atong makita ka na, atong mabasa diha sa Daang Pakigsad, Old Testament. Okay? So, Psalm 137. Now, karon mga tanda ko ni mo. Kinsa may nag- Suwat ni ining Salmo 137, kinsa. You know who wrote it? Well, dili ra ba si David ang nagsuwat ni ini, dili. Actually, we do not know who actually wrote Psalm 137. Dili man si David ang nisuwat ni ini. Dili po si Hari nga David. Dili. The one who wrote this, paminaw, ang nagsuwat giyod ni ini, was one of those captives or survivor gikan sa Jerusalem. Ang nagsuwat ni ning maong libro, Salmo 137, was one of the survivors sa gitawag og fifth cycle of discipline nga gipamtang sa Dios ngadto sa nasod sa Israel. And that fifth cycle of discipline to the nation Israel na itabo kini diadtong tuig 586 before Christ 586 BC now kining maong mga survivors or captives gika sa Jerusalem uh, gipa baktas kini sila they were made to travel by foot from Jerusalem to Babylon. Okay? Sunda niya. Now, as I said a while ago, usan ining mga captives nga akong gihisgutan tried to write a song which became a part of Psalms. And uh, imong mamatik dan kini, out, uh, you will find out that This very song, Kining Maong Awit, the first part of it, 
Gisuat kini primarily to honor the surviving Jews who became captives and pagpahinom dum sa man, to remember the nation Israel. Now, at this point in time, they are undergoing God's fifth cycle of discipline. Okay? Nagatubang sila nini. Din nining panahon again, right at that moment, what was being mentioned about mao ang nasod sa Israel. Yeah, tung higayuna, ang nasod nga Israel did not mean the entire nation of Israel like what we know today. But uh, nagpasabot lamang kini the southern part of the entire Israelite nation nga gitawag kini ugunsa. Gitawag ni Judah. So, we'll just call it Judah. Okay? So, akong balikon. Nga, sa dihang ang nasod sa Israel gi, uh, was being mentioned at the time, it did not mean the entire nation of Israel like what we know today, lagi. Eh. But it meant ang southern nation nga Judah. Now, these people, mao kini usa sa mga na hibilin, Mm. who survived from that fierce battle in Jerusalem, wherein, kadung mga siyudad, gilibutan kini, they were surrounded, o sila napugos to make a long journey, traversing from deserts to deserts, sa uh, kanang naglibot-libot sa kamingawan, which caused most of them to die. Moto ay nakaingon sa pagkawang tayo sa ubahan kanila on the way. O kini atong gitawag nga death march. Okay? O karon, as this particular song was being opened, they were already seated dito sa uh, the cliff of the river. So, atong sugdan kini ha. Nagingon kini sa versikulo 1. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. Mone, versikulo uno. Una stanan, mutana kunimo. To where were they taken? From Jerusalem, they were taken to Babylon. Now, ang Babylon at the time, as is what we know today as the nation of Iraq. Okay? Iraq is what Babylon was before. Og uh, ang intero the uh, no the intero the empire of Babylon in those days was a part of Syria. Karon ang duha ka mga kanang rivers the big rivers duha within babylon in those days mogatong euphrates river ug ang tigris river now ang river that is being meant here in verse 1 is the euphrates river okay now the tigris river dinto ni kanang may mutang dito sa eastern part a little further away east part of that empire, Babylon. Now, atong klaruhon kining butanga dini. In the ancient time, the other name for Babylon was unsa? Who can guess? Chaldea. Mo kiningalan. So, the Babylonians, the other name for them, unsa? Chaldeans. O busa, kung may ingon tawag mga Babylonians or Chaldeans, they were all one and the same. Okay? At that time. Now, and the Chaldeans in those days were not Arabs. Really? Let's make this clear. Whereas now, hmm, karon, ang mga lumulupyo karon sa Iraq are now what? Arabs. But in those days, the inhabitants of that place were not Arabs, but Chaldeans. So, I hope na klaro na ni mo. Karan, mupadayon ta. Ang pulong Zion there in verse 1 was, first of all, 
That's the mountain in Jerusalem where David built his palace. Likewise, that is where King David mitukod siya sa iyang fortress, big fortress, nga iyang gigamit as defense sa iyang palasyo. That's what we mean by Zion. The first word, uh, first use of the word Zion. Apan ang pulong nga Zion, as it is continuously being used in the Bible, means Jerusalem, pagkakaroon. So, now it means Israel. Well, it is not Jerusalem, but it is the southern kingdom which is already Israel. Okay, to this versicle 2. There on the poplars we hung our harps. Well, <laughs> it, actually it is not harp. There is a difference between a harp and layer. Now, didn't he? Layer. Okay, it means layer. Kini. So they hung their lyres. Layers. Now, verse 3. For there our captors ask us for songs. Now, their captors were unsa, Babylonians, the Chaldeans, which we know today as Iraq. Now, atong klaruhon kini alang kanimo. Pangutana. Does the Bible mention of a Babylon in the future? During the tribulation period, will there be Babylon? Naaraba. There is. And it's going to be in the limelight. It would play its significant role in the worst time of man's history. And in tribulation period. <coughs> Excuse me. I repeat. There's going to be Babylon during the tribulation period. O kini, mahitabo kini, sa umabot, in the future. Yes, the Bible speaks of a Babylon that is going to rise in power and is going to bring its worst. Yan ang panahon sa tribulation period. Karon mo, tana ko nimo. What is this Babylon that the Bible mentions about? Or what does Babylon here mean? What is this Babylon that the book of Revelation talks about? Tubag? Hmm? Bawa ka ngun say tubag? Religion. It's religion. The religion that's going to actively move. Yan ang panahona. Tribulation period. But, if we are going to look at Babylon as a nation, which is likewise mentioned, there is a libro sa pinadayag that's coming in the future. Where is Babylon found that you know today? Di pa lang dugay ang kung isgutan kini. Where is it found? In Iraq. So, as we can see here, Iraq will still be existing even during the tribulation period. Diba? Okay. Now, Iraq today is an Arab nation. Hosta? Verse 4. Nagayangon. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Mokato ilang pangutana. Verse 5 says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Verse 6 says, If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Well, alang ning mga captives, it is Jerusalem that is foremost in their priority, or it is Jerusalem that's their first. Correct? That is according to what we just read. So it's Jerusalem nga mao ang ilang nagauna nga prioridad. It is Jerusalem that's the number one focus of their mind. Okay? But you see, the most sad thing is this. Nga ang mga hodiyo throughout the world, including the people inside Israel karon, are not Christians. Dili sila mga Kristohanun. Do you know that? Most of them, uh, they are not saved. 
dili kasagaran nila, dili luwas. You know what? Even if they have been called the chosen people of God, they are not saved. They are unbelievers. May bawo ka ba na? Uwa ka kay bawo. Kasagaran nila, dili, mga dili, magtutuo. They are unbelievers. Now, may I ask you, why are they unbelievers? Nga naman. Nga nung dili man sila mga magtutuo. Do you know why? The answer is, tungod kay kining maong mga hudiyo, nagapaabot pa sa ilang misiyas. They're still waiting. They're still waiting for their Messiah who, according to them, gisaad didto sa daang pakigsaan. Kasabot ka. So they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mao kinihinungdan nga no, if we are going to read and see in the event the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, sa ikaduan niyang pagkanya, second coming, we have read and studied in the book of Revelation, which showed, nagapakita, ng unag yung butang na ipakita sa atong ginoo, mao ang iyang samad sa iyang mga kamot, sa iyang kilid, o both feet. Mao na, iyang ipakita ko na. He's going to show his wounds to the people, even to his disciples, who some of them, uban ka nila, wa mutuo nga siya si Ginoos Kristo, mao ang misiyas, nga ilang gilansang. So those Jews are not saved. Why? Because they don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is their Messiah. Sabtagina. And so, all of the religious rituals or ceremonies, ang ilang mga paagi sa pagsimba kunuhay, are still following the method nga gipraktis pa niya itong daang pagkisaan. Kita ni mo? Mo ka na hinungdan nga no. We see here the seriousness of their sincerity and loyalty to their origin or from where they are dis- where their descendants of. Now in verse 7, at the uh, versículo 7, we are going to see there, at Makita, na he is beginning to talk about Uh, what they wished God would do to their enemies, even if they are listening. He was asked to sing, wasn't he? He was told by his captors, or maybe they were gathered together, and he was told, okay, go ahead, you sing. Sing your song of Zion. And do you know what, what he sang? Remember, O Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Mato yung kanta. Now, kung mo suway ta sa paghinumdom sa nangagi, or or set our minds to the ancient time, while the Israelites were still going around in the desert of Sinai, after they were freed from bondage, you can see Hipto. While they were going around that area, nagibot-libot sila di as kami ngawan, there were three nations existing right across the River Jordan or right across the Dead Sea. Now, right across River Jordan or the Dead Sea are what nations? On sa mga nasod. Tubag? Nasod sa Edom, Moab, o Amon. Now, and that is what this song is talking about. Kining Maong Awit talks about these three nations in that area. In those days, nga karong mga adlawa, these three nations is already the nation of what? The nation of Jordan. This is what is called here as Edom. Okay? Now, are you following me? Now, what is this nation? Arab nation or not? Tubag, it is also an Arab nation. 
Now, what's being said here is this. Remember, O Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Nga pa dayon. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Now, kini nagisgot good sa ilang uh, kanang kaaway, the, the enemies, the enemies who destroyed Jerusalem, the enemies of the Jews in those days. Itong panahon na. Kaya ito sa versikulo 8. Nagingon kini, O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy is he who repays you for what you have done to us. Now, who is Babylon again? Iraq. Kanunay kong mamutanan niya, naroon di kini mong magkalimtan. So, ang Babylon, Iraq na kanon. Now, if you remember during that Inamdum ka ni atong Operation Desert Shield? Uh, that's before Desert Storm, di ba? Wa ba ka makaalinggat nga samtang ang Iraq naga pakigaway batok sa tinipong bansa sa Amerika? Hmm? It was having war against the United States forces in Saudi Arabia. Did you still remember? Unsa ang gibuhat sa Iraq? samtang nagpadayon ang gira. Iba ako ba? Can you remember what Iraq obviously did? Tubag? Iraq bombed Israel. Isn't it? Yes. Iraq bombed Israel even though Israel had nothing to do with the war or conflict. Apan nga naman? Iba ako nga naman? Well, Sukan pa sa daang pagisaan, panahon pa niyan itong Old Testament, these nations had long time been in conflict already. We know that. So, that nation had already, already been against Israel. Mao kiniinong dan nga no, we are seeing this thing in the song that these people are crying out, tear it down. Tear Jerusalem down. Tear Jerusalem down. Apan, on sa mang tubag, versikulo no ibe. He who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Well, as you hear this, perhaps you're going to get mad to the one who is singing the song. Nanuman, why do you think? It is because the one who is singing this was a captive. He was singing against his enemies. But you see, this was the song. This is the very song that the Israelites still keep on singing even today. Now, I'm going to on one important thing here, and it is this. That even if we don't most of the Jews of today are unbelievers. Still, they are the chosen people of God. Sabtagina. And being the chosen people of God, mga katawahan sa Dios, piniling katawahan sa Dios, whatever was promised to the Jews, which was not fulfilled, will have to be fulfilled. God always fulfills His promise. He keeps his word. Timan ni igyo na. Mao ni usas mga kinaiya sa Dios. And God is going to fulfill that at the time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to earth. He is going to fulfill that when he comes. And he is going to fulfill all the unfulfilled promises. Ayaw ginaglimti. Always remember that. The same thing to you, fellow believer. Pamina, God is going to fulfill all His promises. God has all the perfect attributes. Ug usani ini mo ang iyang pagkamatinumanon. Matinumanon siya and true to His promises. Don't ever forget that. Ang kamaturan mo kini. Kita, why pagtuo? We are faithless upon ang Diyos matinumanon. But we can strengthen our faith in the Lord 
if only atong himoon nga pasiuna ang iyang pulong if only nga kita makatubo diya sa grasya o sa kaibalo sa atong ginoong Heso Kristo. Thus, mupuyo kita diha constantly in the fellowship's fear in time and eventually become winners in the Christian way of life. So to you fellow believer in Christ, are you ready to meet the Lord in the air during the rapture? Remember, He is going to come like a thief in the night. Di man na. Magampo ta. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, we are going to close our Bible study directed toward those who are without Christ, without hope, without eternal life. This is a moment, a moment in your life, no matter what you think, no matter what you believe, it's a moment of consideration. It's a moment to put everything else out of your mind and think about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does all this mean? What is Christianity, you might ask? Christianity is Christ. It is a relationship with God through Christ. And there is only one way to have that relationship. As the scripture says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Works. All the works you can do have nothing to do with your relationship with God. Nothing. Why? Because you are a sinner. Because you are not perfect as God is perfect. Because His righteousness has to reject unrighteousness. And you are unrighteous. No matter how many good deeds you do, that is where Christ comes in. That is how important our Lord Jesus Christ is. Because He is the only one who can present you faultless before God. He is the only one. And how does He do that? Well, He went to the cross. He went to the cross for one reason. To die. And to die for you. To die for every member of the human race. He didn't care whether people rejected Him or not. He died for them. That is God's grace, His absolute grace. And what does that mean for Him to die for us? It means that while He was hanging on the cross, God the Father imputed all the sins of all mankind to Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ took all of your sins upon Himself. And when He did that, He paid the penalty. He paid the penalty demanded by God for sin. Sin is spiritual death. Jesus Christ died a substitutionary spiritual death so that we don't have to. Hence, when the scripture says God so loved the world that he gave his only uniquely born son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now you understand why. We also know that by grace you have been saved through faith. And that salvation it is not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul wrote that because Paul understood grace. And he understood the importance of what Jesus Christ did. And so, now... In this moment of consideration by your thinking, do I believe or do I not believe? Because that's the issue. Your volition or free will is the issue. Do you accept the work of Christ or do you not? Because once you accept the work of Christ, that is eternal life. So right where you sit right now, you can make that decision for or against Christ. Magampota. Salamat, amahan na mga Diyos. We thank you once again 
for your wonderful word to us so that we might understand ourselves, so that we might understand the world around us from the divine perspective. Salamat ning tanan o Diyos, na gracia, na kaluwasan. Uban kami sa among pagbubuwag, ingon nga yung mga anak, ilikay kami sa mga kabilinggan, dada kami pagbalik, ugma, sa among pagtuon sa among pulong, at daw-adlaw, at daw-adlaw kaming nag- katon sa imong mga protokol, mga pamagi, aron kami masibo gayo sa imong plano, sa imong kabubuton. Salamat niya mo Bible study, pinagi sa YouTube, sa Vic Malbido Evangelistic Ministry, gamit ang kining maong ministry in a may nung danon kayong paggamit ni mo in a mighty way of naunta kini maka abot ngayon niya itong nanginahangla nini. Gamita kini o Diyos. Salamat ni ining tanan sa ngalan ni Ginoong Iso Kristo, among bugtong manuluwas. Amen. <tinyo>